we're going. <laughs> as always, awkward as possible. Yeah, I think great. I think our wives always cringe when we do things together. I feel like they do. They're, Actually, they're just funny, us like we're the biggest dads. The other day, I uh, voice messaged Paul, and Paul, uh, my wife was walking past me, and she's like. Are you talking to me or to Paul? And it's it's, all, it's almost as if they know that um, it's always me and you. It is, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, who's messaging you? Your other wife? I think <laughs> the main is. question. And my I other wife, she means Alex. The main question is, are your shin pads on? Oh, I left them on. I can't get them off though. My jeans are too tight. A big bender. Uh, what Huge a week bender. it wow. has been. You're definitely feeling it. Oh yeah, I sound like a thirteen-year-old boy. So if my uh, my voice fluctuates, <laughs> I must take a uh, break. I do apologize. I'm not going to try and conceal. The breaks in the uh, yeah in the tone of my voice. So, but I, wow, what a week in football, man! Like for Australia, for football fans here, incredible. I for one am feeling it. Um, got a bit of a sniffly nose, but uh, all good to go. <laughs> um, coffee's been helping me, um, but yeah, I'm like you, you have an exciting few days. You're going to become a dad. Yeah, in the next crazy. couple of hours, we've got so, the phone ready to go, even though it's turned <laughs> off now. <laughs> It is turned off, but we can see it outside of camera. We've got producer Mitch here, so, <laughs> so if we'll just uh, keep Paul time, has to <laughs> depart, Paul will definitely uh, become a father today. Well, maybe, maybe. Hopefully, that'd be nice. Um, it'd be a nice way to cap off the week, I think. <laughs> you know, Tuesday, was Tuesday, Tuesday with the, the soccer is winning. I think then. the main question, are you going to name your child Redmayne? Ooh, maybe Andrew would be a good one. We'll see how we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get into it. Thank you so yeah, much cool. for watching episode one. This is episode two of the Ultra FM podcast. Featuring Paul and I. Yes, it's great to be back. Um, and this week, we've obviously got our episode brought to you by New Balance Furon V6 Plus Vivid Spark Pack. These boots are crazy, super vibrant, and they're definitely out there. Check them out. Ultrafootball.com. Few Aussie footballers have already uh, shared them. I'm really excited to see them feature the next couple of months. Um, it's a great boot. I think New Balance, for me, um, are really pushing the boundaries for them. Yeah. Um, we're going to see some amazing things. But yeah, like thank you so much to New Bounce. I think we might leave this one in front for a bit, yeah, just so everyone good. gets a nice little glance of it. Visual. So we've replaced um, we've replaced Kutuso this week. Obviously the uh, the boys the, the boys did us proud, and we've got us you know, the Almighty Redders up there now. <laughs> um, what a game! What a performance! But what I really want to talk about is what a decision by Graham Arnold. Yeah. I think there's a lot of moments, you know, goalkeepers in the last couple of months with Kepa, you know, cruel in the, in the past. Yeah. But it's a big move for a coach that's, you know, getting a little bit of stick from the Australian public. Huge. I think when we saw that in a live moment, everyone here at Ultra was uh, throwing their arms around, people yeah. on social media calling it out, being like, what are you doing? But it actually worked out. It did, it did. And I think, you know, there was, say, 40 of us here at, um, at Penenka, um, and it was... We were all in disbelief. We were like, this is not happening right now. This this can't happen no right now. No disrespect to Redders or anything. No, not at all. But you could think, you know, uh, Matty Ryan's probably one of our most high profile players in the entire squad. Yeah. And you, you're pulling him out for a penalty shootout. We're, we're sitting there going, this is not going to go well. Everyone's thinking this is Jaka Kalac 2.0. Like, what is going on here? I think in a multiversal sort of thought, like different sort of scenario, if that had hadn't gone the way that Redders, you know, the yeah. save and stuff, it could have been a whole different outcome, whole different discussion. Uh, I think when you look at it, I'm just happy for yeah. Redders mainly as well because this guy has played his heart out his whole season. You know, like even seeing him at Melbourne Heart and the sort of career path he's had, he hasn't given up. And for no. I think for for me, I'm more in love with the moment of the the athlete himself really – you know, pushing through and having that moment, and I, I'm I'm more excited and, and celebrating his moment. I think for a footballer, it is it's it's incredible. I'm so happy for him, especially when you know you're on the brink of retirement, like he was. He had that consideration at one point yep. to come back from that and achieve. You know, he, he's now the next John Aloisi for Australians. In in a way, it is like when we think about Josh Kennedy, when we think about John Aloisi. Correct. He's got his own moment in the stars for Australian football forever now. Correct. And the way he went about it too, right? Like, so he's done this thing that's gone global yeah. he's known as this aussie dancing keeper now the wiggles recognition crazy. now they're trying to announce him to have a gray skivvy yeah which is he's, I think, he's now a cult figure amongst football fans he's definitely gonna live on forever in that sort of aspect okay I, so, um, qu on, sorry. sorry quick question coaching masterclass or was it just dumb luck um again i think it's i think it's a thought that a coaching staff would have had um you don't just go into it on a big game like that it definitely was on you know, the back end thoughts and training, like to think that you know both keepers had some sort of note notes. You know that moment when he threw over the bottle, <laughs> which is a great moment in football uh, again. We've got to talk about that surely. Uh, the for those Peruvian of you, fans unhappy, no, they wouldn't. Have you seen the comments? Oh, I could imagine they'd be copying it. Um, 
I think, look, for, the, for anyone that has missed it, obviously during the shootout, I think it was the between the second and third shot for Peru. Yeah. Um, Redders was obviously on the side, grabbed the keeper's water bottle and saw that there was notes on it and just turfed it over the other side of the sponsor board so he couldn't read his notes anymore. You know, as it unveiled, it obviously worked. It worked, yeah. um, I think the Peruvian keeper guessed the first two penalties correctly, obviously saved the first one. Um, and then after that, after the bottle was over the fence, the rest all went in, so... We spoke to Sorensen, luckily enough, a, a footballer that still comes through ultra football. Yeah. I'm always honored to have him come um, come by. And even he said it, like, it worked out. And I think for goal, goalkeepers, they're one of the players in that squad that always get the abuse mainly. If it's a win, it's always the strikers that get the applaud. If it's a loss, yeah. it's always the keepers getting the fault. Of course. And I think for the goalkeepers, I think it was a great moment in both scenarios where yeah. you saw the ups and downs. But... um. I think the body language from Andrew Redmayne for me, like the dancing stuff, that's that's a whole different game. Yeah, yeah. But just for a goalkeeping uh, point of view, he didn't he didn't show any sort of fear. No, which like is we incredible. saw we spoke about the keeper from the Peruvian keeper, Gilles, yeah. I think. Yeah, laying on the floor, sitting on the floor, yeah. not showing any sort of thing. He there's a new thing they've been talking about where players would stand in the way of a, a penalty taker, so yeah. the other team would um, sort of give the abuse to the wrong player. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that video in the Premier League. I'm not sure who did it where they had a fake player hold the ball and then last moment they gave it to the actual penalty taker. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. everyone's hurling the abuse to the, pl- the penalty taker, who they thought was. Yeah. And then the other player comes in, takes it. Thank sh- you. Towards. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. I love that there's so many mind games that come through. With it this has to be. Because there's obviously such a lot psychological battle for the player individually. Yeah. So if you can either alleviate pressure or, you know, build confidence for them, all these little things, you know, keep it coming up to the player and, you know, giving him the ball from the same team versus the other keeper stalling. Like we yeah. saw both keepers stall, obviously, during the penalty as well. There's so many tactics. And, you know, even if it's the smallest percentages of differences, this is elite sport. Yeah. And this is why it's so good because it's the finest margins that make the difference. Great game overall. Um, Australia did show up. Mm. Peru, I still think they should have come a bit earlier to, um, yeah, yeah. to Doha. Um, I did read that it came three days before the game. While yeah. the Socceroos had been there for a few more days with the game previously. It helps. Um, I know some of the players have played in uh, Arab states where they are accustomed to the condition in June. Yeah. June, July, we see why the World Cup's not on at that time of the year. Oh, it's crazy to think that they would have played at a 40-plus um, degree day. It's with too 20. much. Let's talk about, I think, one moment that I was yes, so... I know where you go. Uh, I know funny, exactly where you yes. But there was a moment that I was screaming out. I was like, that <laughs> pass by... Beige. Beige yeah, on yeah. the left wing was assisted by the fans. It, that defied all physics. It was like everyone exhaled at the same time and it just kept that ball just tucked kept going. in. Was, I, I was saying it was a Shane Warne moment where like a bit of wind just brought the yeah, ball yeah, back yeah. in on a nice You like your cricket, cricket references on this show, don't you? <laughs> it literally spun back and it stayed in play. Now, my question is to everyone, and please let it, um, make sure to subscribe and like on our, all our socials, but let, let us know in the comments below. Do you think the fans are going to be, be a bigger assistance on the field in a game aspect and more than the weather. Because again, that through ball would have been out on a normal day. Again, wind. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. But <laughs> we like, don't know. <laughs> but wind in an open play stadium, like say like Cooper Stadium here in Australia yeah, yeah. and maybe Bolton or um, even um, Fulham. Huddlesford, those open yeah, yeah, field yeah. places. Um, Fulham, of course. Yeah. Um, I think wind will have always been a natural element, but now having artificial yeah, this is interesting because this obviously brings into play, you know, FIFA hasn't had the greatest reputation in the past and their claim that they've done a clean out, you know, of all the, the corrupt stuff and all that sort of stuff. Um, but this kind of leans in towards an opportunity for someone to, you know, fiddle with the elements, right? Because there's yeah. full control now. Previously, obviously, open stadiums and, you know, things like, um, like you were saying, 94, you can't tell me anyone at the Pasadena Bowl is going to be able to control the environment. The stadium's massive, massive, right? So you go into this stadium now and then all of a sudden, okay, we can control the aircon. Let's pump it up a little bit. Give this a bit of a, ten, putting uh, a hot, headwind. Hop behind the soccer roos. Yeah, cook correct. Them out. Temperatures again. Yeah, that's another thing altogether. I'm thinking more like velocity, but that's incredible. Mm. It's it's going to be a, a very different dynamic, I think. Is it also behind the goalkeeper? Can you imagine that? If like the goalkeeper is just copying this wind? Yeah, I, well, because it's quite close to the edge of the pitch, yeah. especially at the Doha Stadium. The, you see the vents. Yeah, that's it's going to be interesting because, I don't know, it, it would have to be very progressive airflow, right? Like, it's not going to be intense. It's not going to be like you're standing under a fan at Bunnings. It's funny, like, <laughs> when I get home sometimes now during winter, my wife's got their heater on at 25. I'm like, what are you doing at 25? <laughs> Do you reckon if someone just forgets the temperature one day? just like, hey. <laughs> it leaves it on. And then Everyone's comes back sweating. and it's like, oh, shit, it's so hot. <laughs> um, overall, I think the game was great. Um, I do have a little bit of a shout out to a certain player that I did not enjoy watching uh, during the game. Johnny Bravo. It was the Peruvian player, um, Advin Kula. 
Yeah, number the right 10 back. that came. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he was good first early days. He was he was strong. He was coming on hard. Yeah, but he just complained the entire game. Like This is this is Johnny Bravo haircut guy, right? No, no, oh, no, no, no. That's um Johnny Bravo haircut. That's I, that was the guy that got in. That was Cueva. Cueva, that's right. Yeah, um okay. I think Kula was the guy who had the little nose strip. Okay. Oh, yes, the one that missed the penalty. Yeah, yeah, Yes, yeah, thank you. Lovely. Producer Mitch is here as he's well. On. We should have given a shout out. Oh, yes, I'm so should. sorry, Producer he's back. Mitch. Um, <laughs> he is here. He's back. He's keeping us in control. Um, Advan Kula, like, don't get me wrong. He, I looked at his stats. He's played at some. He's playing at Boca Juniors, so it's Big amazing. Club. Like, I'm here and he's in Boca Juniors, so. <laughs> we can't talk too much. He here. has a better sort of reputation than I would have yeah, now. Yeah. But I wasn't a fan of him on the game. I just thought there's too many antics. Just Yeah, like, you know, off the it's, ball. it's easier said when you're the opposition team too, right? Like, so. Oh, look, I love watching, like, when it comes to, you know, even watching United this season, yeah. I always enjoyed watching us get thrashed because you see some amazing football. But watching the Peruvians, I feel like they just, they didn't gel well. <laughs> no, there, there was a bit of a disconnect between them. I think, I don't know, that I expected more out of them. I know they kept a high amount of possession, especially in the second half. But I really did expect them to come with a bit more like... You know, bit of flair. Bit of flair, bit of flair, bit of flavor. The fun fact of the, of the game was that their first shot on target was after 90 minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow. I knew... I was on a podcast I heard and I was like, uh, the ESPN ones. Also, ESPN, I'm sorry, great podcast, but they do my head in. I don't know which one it is. He's got the annoying um, accent. He was giving it to Red Vane. He's like, oh, he's a clown. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> is this American? Yeah, country? ESPN. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so much music and so much noise. <laughs> um, uh, but nice. yeah, they were just giving it to Red Main and they were like, yeah, the Peruvians, it was their game, but they didn't show up. It's like, it's football. Yeah. And I think, look, being American, they're probably going to have a bit of a bias to a South American team as well, right? I don't know. Costa Rica mm. is in the World Cup. I feel yeah. sorry for New Zealand. I know it's not in our notes, but I do no, want to say but- we're pretty lucky with um, how it turned out because completely Peru played well in the South American sort of yeah, um, qualifying. yeah. qualifiers. Yeah, yeah. Whoever we came across, I think the lads did well. Um, Martin Boyle definitely man of the match <laughs> post post yeah, ninety minutes. Yeah, he's post. I love that. I, we should be able to give awards for off field antics. I think yeah. Martin Boyle definitely uh, the shin pad of the of yeah, the game. Yeah. What well, was it? Three days later, still wearing his kit. That's elite. That is absolutely elite. literally. Um, so. You mentioned the Kiwis, obviously tough, tough situation to, for them to be in. Yeah, um, it is. Barbarous is getting sent off. From from all reports, I, I've only really watched the highlights. So from Did you all see reports, the goal the, and the yeah. disallowed moment? Yeah, yeah. So obviously questionable refereeing. I saw that his Wikipedia page got hacked as well, which was pretty funny. I yeah. love that. Um, that was a bit of a laugh. So, hey, yeah. does Ultra have a Wikipedia page, Mitch? Mm. Maybe we should get onto I'm that. I'm going to make one. Yeah, or well, between two shirts. We'll see how we go. Um, obviously, yeah, look, moving into the World Cup, then obviously we've got a, a group of France, Tunisia, and Denmark. I'm going to be honest. I'm disappointed. I would like to see us come across other teams in a World Cup. <laughs> like, it always feels like, I feel like this is like the Chris Kringle of World Cups. It's like you always get the same person. We literally get France <laughs> every like time. Do we, have, do we have Denmark last World Cup I as well? Think I think we did. So, producer Miss, can you quickly check that? Um, oh, look. Tunisia could be a dark horse. Yeah, well, to be honest, it's, it's, it, I feel like it's primed perfectly for Aussies that aren't going to Qatar because that Qatar, the, the, the Tunisia game is at 9 p.m. kickoff here. Wow. So that is perfect for us. You know, think of it this way, right? You know, we could, if we can scab a draw against Denmark, a win against Tunisia, four points is not, you know, unfeasible to get through to the next stage. So Denmark and Peru. So, you know, we've already got over Peru. So it's not, not, not impossible to go over Denmark. Why can't we play against like the States or even Wales or yeah, England in a group stage? Like, imagine, but imagine, imagine a group stage of like Australia, England, USA and well, you see the someone other, else that's look, sort we'll of like allies. Look, we'll talk about our group stage quickly, but I wanted to spot out something quickly in the World Cup. Um, the group that is... Sorry, let me get back. All right. The group that I feel sorry for the most is the one with the England one. Yeah. England, USA, Wales, and Iran. Yeah, well, no fans. No, <laughs> no fans. But like, that's going to be a pretty, like England versus USA will be amazing. That'd be cool. Uh, England, Wales will be amazing. Yeah. And then Iran, USA is going to be amazing. Well, wow. yeah, that is going to be incredible, actually. I think Iran fans, I, I underestimated during the Asian Cup that was here. They were out in force. They were incredible. Look, and, and being close to home. I would just want to avoid them in the next stage. I don't oh, want yeah. another Australian moment. Oh, I know. That would break my heart. Imagine but that. That was a qualifier, though, that we lost to them, wasn't it? Yeah, but still, it just still haunts us. That um, was 2001. Yeah, I think. the MCG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. that whole. Um, another group stage Costa Rica, Germany, Japan, and Spain. I feel like yeah. we got a better group stage than Japan did, even though they won. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's obviously quite random. But, but they get to play Germany. Like, how amazing is that? 
Mm. Germany haven't been great though. I know uh, Nations okay. League is a different story, but in the last, oh, yeah. for last you, Italians is definitely not great. No, we're cooked. Um, we're cooked. We're but bad. I think Denmark, France, we could definitely show up at Denmark, Tunisia, France again, bogey team in the sense that like it's expected that they do well. France is France. France is France. But look, this this is probably a good segue to what I was wanting to talk about next is the the winners' curse of the World Cups. So we had Italy in 2006 win the World Cup, and then 2010 bow out in the group stage. Yep. Um, Spain did the same thing the following World Cup and then Germany as well. France obviously winning the last one. If they implode, I know we've got them first and we can take a point that is huge for Australia. If we take a point even away from France and a win away from Tunisia, then we can walk into Denmark with some confidence, potentially take another point. Yeah. I think, you know, four to five points there is massive, massive. I know we can't write off Tunisia either. It's um, it's gonna be a tough one. Like again, it's an end of the year sort of scenario, different mentalities. Again, when I say football, 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 it's a, yeah. it could be anyone's game on the day. Correct. Like Tunisia could show up and have a whole different mental aspect to the World Cup than mm. Australia does. Overall, I'm really excited. The fact we've made another World Cup, positive positivity for Australian football. Um, I read somewhere it was like 16 million. I'm not sure if that's AUD or USD really? for Australian funds. Um, I know when we won the Asia Cup, we got a lot of money that helped build a lot of infrastructure. Yep. The football pitch near my house actually says that um, this was donated from the funds that we won um, from the Asia Cup. So you can yeah, sort wow. of see it, it has the logo and everything. It literally says on there, um, this stadium is, the, this facility is uh, thanks to FFA for winning the Asia Cup. Yeah, so incredible. five years from now, we've got, you know, even next year, we've got the Women's World Cup. I think Australian football is in a good place. Definitely, it is in a good place. Um, now, it could have been worse. It, oh, definitely, it could have been a lot worse. Imagine, imagine we don't win that, you know, and then now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're sitting here talking about the state of Australian football, how bad it is, yeah. what they need to do to rebuild. Oh, I'm so glad we're not having that conversation. Good, good point. Before we move on to our next subject, what do you think about Australian? Like the terminology of Australian cattle, there's not enough Australian players. I, I think it's. I'll let you think about like. Yeah. So personally, I think there's enough Australian footballers around the world. Um, there's enough talent. I'm um, just making sure your wife's not calling you. <laughs> it's, it's so far, uh, okay. no, just, it's all just good. emails. So there's enough footballers out there. We've got enough youngsters. I know we lost this morning in Saudi Arabia um, with the young ones. We didn't yeah. make, make the finals again. But I think there's enough footballers out there. My biggest problem is that I just don't think there's enough people behind the players getting them to amazing spots. And with that being said, yesterday there was an announcement for Yaya Dekuli and um, Toure from Adelaide signing for Stan, uh, was it Ram? I can't remember, one of the French teams. Guess who took him there? Who? Former victory player, well, French player, Frenchish. Frenchish? Ben yeah. Cafilla. Oh, well. Ben Cafalo. Ben well. Cafalo. He literally took them. Yeah, so he's been well. working in Australia helping Aussies move overseas. Is, it, is he a player agent now? I don't know officially, but I think he has their relationships with French clubs. Okay, wow. That's so incredible. with that being said, I think the biggest issue in Australian football is not enough good people behind these players guiding them to bigger clubs. I agree. I think, look, there's there's two sort of elements that I, I was considering while you were saying all this. And play, people behind players is one thing, getting them into Europe. I think another thing is making sure the game here is developed correctly. And there, obviously you've got... I, I have no issue with the quality of players that are coming out of the country. I think we're getting there. I so many city players have been a part of this? Correct, right? I think the problem is actually in the development and the coaching side of things. So I don't really think it's with the players. I think there's not enough good coaches. I, I watch a lot of junior NPL games and you know you see kids getting picked because of their athletic ability. Yeah. But there's a technical kid that might be a little bit heavy or a little bit slow that they sort of let sit on the bench. And for me, that, that really bothers me because that's probably where our biggest gap is. Australia is almost known globally now as like this fit, fast, yeah. strong nation on the football scale. But we're not technically that great. That's why all of a sudden you look at Aaron Moy drops into the national team and we actually play a reasonable game of football. Yeah, and he hasn't played proper football. He's played star four. He's been COVID for two, COVID. He's been locked out for two years. Like, what's this guy going to do in China? Denis Jean should have had a, an appearance. I still think he's one of the better midfielders. He literally promoted with his team yeah. up into Ligue 1. Yeah. Um, great player. Great player. There's so many good footballers. Like, even our defense, like Atkinson, a couple of years ago, wasn't even thought about soccer. Is now look at him in hearts Starting. alongside Rouse, yeah. alongside um, Devlin. Again, there's so many footballers. The players are there. There's, there's footballers. Yes. I think it's just people picking favorites. Correct, again, correct. There's the whole of Arnie talk, again, I'm not a coach, so I can't decide on that. Yeah. It is something that, you know, the big people would need to talk about. I but think, look, my, yeah. Arnie, I feel like it's a hard one with Arnie too. Any 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 past player that's become a coach, or I guess most play, most coaches are going to be 
past players to a degree, but most past professional players. Arnie was elite as a player. Like he was probably up there with what we have now as, I don't know, McLaren, right? Like if not probably better. Um, no disrespect to Jamie either, but I just think um, Grandma was a great, a great player. Um, do I don't know, like does that affect the like the rapport that everyone has with him? Not the rapport, probably the wrong word, but you know, that, that sort of um, perspective on what he is as a coach. It's tough. Like who in the starting 11 that other day would you see as a coach? It's hard to know. I think it's more of on a personal level too. Like sometimes you can tell with players like Xavi or mm. like I wouldn't have expected Vincent Company to come out and coach Burnley this week. I thought that was a bit of a bizarre one. But, but at the same time, you know, the, these guys are, they, I think they know amongst the players themselves, they know which ones look like coaches, yeah. which ones could be good coaches. Um, so it's sort of inevitable. Uh, I don't know, actually, in that, in that team, not many that I would think would end up being a coach. I don't know. It's hard to, hard to say. Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. All right, la la last thing about the group stages. What do you think? Progress? I would love, uh, to be honest, look, just being there is an achievement. Yeah. If we can get out of the group stage, that's like, <laughs> we're gone again. Like, that's have another they, Have they got the sort of group stages progression? Who, if we win, goes where? I'm not too sure yet. It would be out. I know we have it. So we're in group. We're in group D. D, okay. So fixtures, the winner and second of group D. And I'll playing C. Okay. So yeah. either Argentina or Mexico. Or what are the other two teams in that group? Uh, Poland and Saudi Arabia. Because we are assuming that those other two teams don't, don't qualify. <laughs> um, <laughs> Argentina and Mexico. They're, they're definitely like Poland won't make it. Shouldn't, unless, uh, unless, <laughs> unless your mate Levard goes nuts. Lewin and uh, Maddie Cash. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I reckon we'll progress. I, I really hope so. I, I would love for it. we can do Tunisia and Denmark and even get a draw of France. I really hope so. And look, I, you know, I, I'm not going to, to Qatar and I'm going to give them a plug because it was absolutely awesome here at Panenka, um for the qualifier game. Yeah. Get down here. Like, I know Fed Square is awesome because it packs out, but here it's awesome. It, there's, it's not cold. You're inside. There's food, there's coffee. Uh, to be honest, it's going to be a 9 p.m. game. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's booze. Producer Mitch will be here for sure. 100%. There'll be booze. There'll be booze. He's calling it out. There'll be, There'll booze. be booze. So it's going to be a big night. I'm, uh, I think there might be something on the cards that we can kind of do a bit of a pre-game thing for people as well. If I don't go. If you don't go. Yeah. If not, I'll do it and I'll just have a little stuffed toy of you. Maybe we'll put you on the frame. <laughs> um, all right. So still on the, on the topic of Socceroos, still one last thing. If you could pick a five-a-side of your best all-time Socceroos players, who would you pick? Mm. Five aside, that's a tough one. Look, there's so many amazing footballers for me. And I was going to make a joke and say like all the Macedonians that are represented. <laughs> there was a tweet by a certain um, Australian media representative who said like, this team is full of ethnicity. And that's what I love about Australian yeah. culture. Like, it, you know, the, the, most countries now have multiple representatives in one. You know, a, a Macedonian team has a lot of Albanians and Turkish players. Um, you know, Swedish has a lot of Macedonians. But for me, I would have said players like Ognetovsky, um, Stojovsky, <laughs> Teleski. Um, but uh, it's hard. A goalkeeper for me, I think Bosnich. Yeah, nice. Like okay, Bozza. I didn't expect that. Yeah, that's I love good. Bozza. I think Bosnich is the character. Yeah, nice. Um, defender. I, even though that moment that he had in the World Cup and, of course, post career, I'd have Lucas Neal. Yep. Um, Vidmar. Yes. Uh, you're, love, you're very defensive. This is a 5 Yeah, yeah, it has to be. It has to wow. be defensive. You're not concerned. Um, yeah, midfielder for me. Oh, I'm one, assuming you're two, saying three. Tony Vidmar, right? Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, both of the brothers. They're both good. But, yeah. uh, midfield, I'd have in the middle, Yedinak. Yes, you got one player left. And then up front, Cahill. Wow, Gone this is classic. good. I actually don't have any of the same players as oh, you. Oh, well. My five side is completely different. Okay, this is great. I've gone with Schwarzer. Okay, yeah. well, like, I guess that's probably most people captain obviously. Just kind bias, of answer, right? Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even consider Bozza. But that's, yeah, that was There's great. so many keepers, don't yeah. get me wrong. Like, everyone forgets Callis played amazing. I feel like our sides would play great against each other, actually. Or if they're all in their prime, because mine, <laughs> mine's ultra ultra attacking. So my most defensive player is going to be Bresciano. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's I'd go with a DM. DM playmaker, because yeah, yeah. who needs to defend your five side anyway? Um, yeah. Harry Kuehl, undeniable. You need a bit of techers. You need a bit of techers on the on the five side, man. Yeah, I, I've got three leg breakers. You got three leg breakers, too. True, true. I'll skip past. Anyway, um, the Dukes up top. Yeah, Dukes. So I'm going with the Diamond. Yeah. Um, and then my last spot, I was really torn about who to put because I'm really like, I like the balance. I like, I want someone that's going to fit the squad. Let me and guess. You got Harry Suter up front. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've got Dukes up top. I've got Dukes. And then I'm going to go with Archie. Yeah. Give, give them album boy a plug. And I reckon, I reckon him, him and Kuehl, there'll be a bit of razzmatazz going on there. 
We should have had, we should have made it also potential Socceroo five where it's like the ones that didn't choose Australia. <laughs> Simunich, <laughs> Falpato. You know what was funny actually? So, so researching, no one wants Falpato. Researching for this episode, I went through you know um, a list of the best Socceroos of all time. Yeah, and I found some website from I think it was the US, and they ranked them based on points. And the oh, points through accumulation of like games played, um, I think goals, goal stats, appearances, yeah. like performance grades and all that sort of stuff. Who's number one? Well, you know what was funny? Number four was Josip Simonic. <laughs> and I was like, he's not even Australian. He was born here. So that yeah. this this stats or data thing just pulled anyone that has born Australian, Australian ties. So if they have Australia in their bio. So Martin so Boyle, Harry Suda, all these players. Well, there were so it. many players in there that I was like, he's not Australian. He's not Australian. <laughs> So, oh, look, they probably could be Australian. They just didn't play for the nah. Socceroos. Um, we have one more thing before we take a break, is yes. it? Yeah, we've got sections. So we've got um, the locker room. All right, let's so do this. We've got the Juventus kit and then we'll, so we'll take we a quick have break. Juventus kit and then, oh, we didn't tease at the start. We've got a, we've got a call coming in. We do. Um, we're going to make that call soon. So we have this Juventus kit for this season. Um, lift a bit higher for the viewers. I personally like this one. I think... Adidas and Juventus haven't really gelled together in many years. No. The only reason why I like this one is back to a certain angle of stripes. Yeah, that's great. The only thing I don't like about it, and this has been one thing that everyone's been hating, is the Jeep sponsorship. Yeah, look, it's not as bad as last year. That blue, the blue sponsor, I can't remember what it was. It was like the 4X something, some type of Jeep. Yeah, yeah just the, one of the models. Yeah, yeah, correct. I think it was a bit over the top. It, it, was, it didn't suit the kit. I, I like that they've kind of toned it back a bit this year. I think the lightning bolts are a bit cheesy, but... The kit stripes are awesome, I reckon. I really rate it. I know you said that plays homage on to like the, the stadium. stadium. Yeah. So Just the angles. Again, if this was a Melbourne shirt, it could be like, it's Amy inspired Park. by uh, no, no, no. Amy Park, but maybe Amy Park <laughs> was inspired by the Melbourne, um, uh, what do you call it? Design elements of the triangles True. and all that. True. Um, but look, it's a simple shirt. Nothing really like, I think classic about it, but it is going to be well known if they um, push for the season again. Because yeah. again, they had a bit of a tough one last year. Uh, yeah, Lachovic, it's a big pickup. Big They're losing Dybala, so we'll see what happens. It's gonna be interesting. One thing I do like about Addy this year is what they've done with their crest, their own the, the Addy patch. Yeah, and they've gone like a full plate. Yeah, yeah. Rather than the you know stitching to the material, I do. I reckon that's really cool. It's something a little bit uh, retro about it. I love the collar. Love uh, love all the, the detailing in it. Uh, this is the um, era ready. So if you do, you know, look at the heat ready, which is the high spec, you'll yep. see there's a lot more detailing in it. Most of the kids have it. Of course, at Ultra Football, we do have. Um, I think both in many of the shirts. So yep. give us a message, let us know what you're after. But uh, overall, I think it's a great shirt. And I think finally they've kept it simple and clean. That's it. Keep it simple, stupid. Well, producer Mitch. We'll give that one to you. All right, so now we're going to hear a, uh, a quick message from one of our sponsors and then we'll be back with a, a player chat to you guys to, uh, to enjoy. Today's sponsorship is a Red Mains Recycling. If you have any bottles in your home and they're not special or you know don't have any notes in them, chuck them in. Reuse, repurpose. Um, would you believe in that? Like that whole message? I feel like it's it's, it's feasible. So yeah, it's today's feasible. sponsorship is Red Mains <laughs> Recycling. Don't throw away bad plastics. So thank you uh, for watching part one. But now part two, we've got a call coming in. I'm not sure where he is. I just saw his stories. <laughs> I don't know if he's uh, in the sun or in the shade. So we're not going to hold him too long. But is we someone do. calling in? Yes, it is. Jason Davidson. Welcome, mate. What's up, guys? How are you? Uh, how are you going, mate? How are the uh, how are the post post qualification celebrations going? Oh, I literally just got off the plane, uh, joined the family on holiday now, so I'm standing in a pool on the phone. Lovely, lovely. Whereabouts in the world are you? So, I'm in Bali here for a couple of days. Beautiful, mate. I th and, uh, we'll see where I go after that. <laughs> I think the main question for us is: Are your shin pads still on? <laughs> yeah, everything's pretty fresh in the in the uh, in the suitcase, not on me, but uh, it's all in the suitcase. Still haven't unpacked everything. I think that's a, a that's going to be a part of a Australian sort of folklore from now on. Is like you lads wearing the kits for more than just the game moment. Um, would you say that's something that maybe will be a, a sort of team culture? Like if you have a positive game, you can wear the the whole entire outfit for the post celebrations. <laughs> yeah, a few of the boys, uh, I think you guys would have seen on social media, having the pool and celebrate the next day and then um, just super happy with such a long um, campaign and then they just, with all that kind of emotion, 
just wanted to party on and uh, yeah I think it's something cool like to to, to, to have that um, have that feeling the next day and everyone obviously knew who we were at the hotel because we've been there for a couple of weeks and uh, yeah. everyone just kind of joined in with the celebrations and it, yeah, it was just amazing can't, can't describe it well, we're so thrilled and honoured to have you on this um, call. I think we all at Ultra are so thrilled to see you a part of the Green and Gold. Um, we're massive fans of you. And, of course, when it comes to making the squad again, um, it's good to see you on the Green and Gold. How, how did it feel for you personally? I know I saw your stories and stuff and even the Socceroos posting about it. Um, how was your personal um, feelings towards being back in that squad? Yeah, obviously, you know, um, I made my debut quite young and um, got growing up and I haven't been in the soccer camp for probably, I think it's like five, six years now. And so all the older players in the squad are pretty much the boys that came through. And then the first day on camp, they notified me that I was actually with the, the first cap play in that, like the first cap play in that team to get capped. So... You know, the last time I was in camp, I was one of the young boys and coming into camp, one of the older and experienced boys. Um, but, you know, it, nothing really changes in camp. It was good to catch up with everyone, new coaching staff for me, um, new couple of uh, old faces in the staff and some new ones. So they kind of just fitted quite in nicely, like, you know, like I, just an old friend you haven't seen for a long time. So uh, it was nice to, to be a part of. Um, but I wanted to stick around. I had a good chat to, to Arnie um, that I wanted to make sure that I stayed right through to, to give uh, to support the boys and if I needed to, you know, help with some of the younger boys with experience because, you know, I've played at a World Cup as well. So um, the biggest thing for me that I took away was just the, such a, a united uh, team, you know, one big family and everyone's so close. So for me, it was just, it was just an honour and privilege to, to be back in the national team. That's it. That's yeah. Look, mate. From from our end, looking in, it's it obviously looks like you're a tight crew, and um, obviously you know there's a lot of a lot of planning and a lot of preparation that goes into these kinds of things. And you probably know we're going to ask you about Redders um, and the whole that whole you know the antics that obviously went on. And um, like you, you obviously don't have to divulge too much into like, you know the the tactical aspect of it. But how much um, how much of it did you know as a player, and how much of it was uh, was expected? I think no one knew. Maybe Arnie. Yeah, uh, well, I, yeah. I don't know if the coaching staff knew, um, but from a player's perspective, none of us knew. Um, and we were all just kind of shocked like, when it happened. I think even if you, you – I don't know if the camera showed uh, Maddie, Maddie's face. I think he was also surprised. Like everyone <laughs> kind of got caught off guard. Um, but obviously, you know, he's worked for Redders before and he's known for, for – um, they needed shootouts. I've obviously been on the wrong side of one in against Perth when we played Sydney and saved a couple as well. So he's, he's made a name for himself now after the game. All the fans and everyone kind of like were coming up to him and everyone because of obviously that dance and, and throwing that water ball, <laughs> bottle over as well. It's, uh, you know, he, 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 he came on and credit to him because, you know, he stepped up and, and got us to a, a World Cup. Yeah, look, it, it's, it is. It's one of those things, you know, football kind of presents those things to you and, you either you either grab it by the balls and, and take it, or you kind of got to just deal with the consequences, right? So, um, no, it's 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 been a pleasure to have, have this chat with you, mate. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your break to to come and have a quick chat with us. And um, yeah, no, thank you so much, and congratulations, congratulations to all the boys. It's it's honestly we're we're all so ecstatic for you. No, thank you very much for having me. And you know, when I when I'm back in in Melbourne, we'll, I'll come in and say hello to all the boys again, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Done, mate. Thank you. Enjoy the sun, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. All right. See you guys. Thanks for having me. See you, mate. Well, there you have it. We uh, just had a call from Jason Davidson. We're going to try and make that little segment a bit more. I know we're adding different parts to our <laughs> podcast. Still rough around the edges here, it but um, it's good to hear from him. It is. It's great. It's actually really nice to take your time out of his day because a lot of players now are cooked. They've just had a whole season plus qualifiers. Yeah. It's it's a time of year where they just want to switch off. The last few years, they didn't get to travel. Yeah, exactly. Now they get right. to go places with their families. Yeah. So good on him. Good on him for relaxing. I think uh, when it comes to families, you definitely have to run off soon because your phone's been going off. I don't know where it's gone now. You're going to become a dad soon <laughs> and really excited for that. Um, overall, I think there's so many things to talk about. We've got a lot of topics. Um, I've got an amazing photo shoot coming up today with a Matilda, official Matilda as of last uh, couple of days ago. Yeah, I think um, these kind of give a bit of a hint. That's yeah, a so I'll let today. you guys think about who that is, Celtic and Aussie. Um, it's good to see you in the squad. Really exciting. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to mention before we end the podcast today? Um, yeah, look, I think I mentioned earlier about getting down to Panenka for those um, World Cup games yep. and you know any other football game that's on. They're, they're, most of the time, they're always on here. Um, the only other thing is, obviously, PFC, we've got a monthly pop-up coming up as of July. 
So jump onto Instagram and all other socials and you'll see the dates and stuff for them. So come down and yeah, we'll have a bit of fun. I'm excited for that. There's going to be every Sunday, once, one every Sunday? It's once a month. So it's a Sunday. I think it's every second Sunday of every month. Um, and there's a few that tie into some World Cup games, which is going to be a bit of fun. Yeah, so there's a Man United games coming up too. Yes. Um, and I'm pretty sure one of them is that same weekend. So if you're, I think it's before the Crystal Palace game. Huge. Yeah, huge. It's going to be massive. So if you're after any United shirts, definitely come down. But um, Ultra, there's a lot of new stock coming into the store. Um, I've seen a few of the kits that we're stocking. So I'm really excited to see them go to public. It's going to be awesome. Overall, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Make sure to subscribe, like, and follow all our socials. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Stay with me, stupid people. And we'll definitely see you in the next episode. Thank you and goodbye. See you later. Bye.